Oshkosh Media is. Government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and municipal news. And a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. Your hosts, Emily Springstrow of Oshkosh Media and City Manager Mark Roloff. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the City Manager's Report. I'm John Urban. Joining me, City Manager for the City of Oshkosh, Mark Roloff. On today's program, we're going to be doing a preview of some of the highlights of the upcoming Tuesday, November 12th, Oshkosh Common Council meeting. But as usual, we'd like to talk a little bit about some news and notes of things happening here in the City of Oshkosh. And Mark, we're going to be starting things off talking about an issue that normally this time of year would not be a big problem, which would be leaf pickup. But of course, Mother Nature hasn't cooperated and has decided to move winter in a little bit sooner. Yeah. Well, great to be here, John. Thanks for that <laughs> opener. Uh, remind us all about the weather and everything that's going on. But, uh, you know, the bad news is that we got snow at an inopportune time. A lot of people have their leaves out and are just looking to enjoy autumn, and then this happens. Uh, but uh, as you see from our video that uh, our Oshkosh Media folks did, our uh, leaf collection crew is still out there, even though they're sucking up a little bit of snow with the leaves, uh, we are continuing. But obviously, this is a little slower than uh, when it's just leaves out there. So uh, it slowed a little bit. We may be behind, but keep putting your leaves out. Uh, our goal is to get them the day after your garbage collection. But if we miss you, if you aren't picked up, it's not that we missed you. It's really more that we haven't gotten to you yet. So just be patient. We're going to be uh, catching up with you eventually. And, uh, you know, the snow will melt a little bit. There, there is still hope for that. Uh, and, of course, just because they're covered by snow, please don't rake the leaves into the street. Um, we will keep them out of the street. That prevents them uh, flooding from happening in the gutter, in the in the gutters, and then in the uh, stormwater catch basin. So just keep them on your terrace, and we'll find them through the uh, uh, th through all the snow that's out there. All right. We also wanted to talk about this uh, fire department's detector trek, and I understand this program has been going on for several years now, and it's be it usually is done during fire prevention month. October's fire prevention month. We had another successful program. Uh, John Holland and, and, and members of the fire department are out there canvassing neighborhoods to install smoke detectors at no charge. So folks got a knock on the door and uh, John or one of our uh, uh, fire department folks was there to uh, offer a free smoke detector and we checked 162 residences through this process and 44% needed detectors installed. So there's still not a lot of folks that have them. Uh, you know, if you still want a smoke detector, we will uh, we'll, we'll provide you with one. Just give us a call at the fire department, 236-5249. We'd be happy to provide you with a smoke detector. But we make a big deal about it in, um, in October because it's fire prevention month. And there are some folks who have never had a smoke detector in their, in their house. So we know that it's important uh, to have that. That is the number one prevention tool that you have in your residence is one of those smoke detectors. So we want to make sure that uh, that you have one and so much so we have people donating funds or smoke detectors to the fire department so that every residence in the city can have one. Great program. Okay, uh, for folks that have driven by High or Algoma lately, they may have noticed that the uh, Oshkosh Public Museum's carriage house roof has been, uh, been being worked on and I understand they're almost complete with replacing the roof on that on that um, project. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, you know, for those of you who don't know what the carriage house is, it's immediately when you're facing the museum, it's immediately to the left. And obviously, this was a film that's a few weeks old because uh, it, there was no snow out there. It looks too there. nice out on the video. But the roof was an old uh, slate tile roof. This is not a slate tile roof. That was very expensive. But we found some simulated slate tile that's really kind of a resin type of thing. Um, and there had been so many repairs and patches made to this roof. Frankly, it was, um, it was leaking. And as we uncovered the old roof, we found some, some evidence of rot. So it was, it was well overdue for a renovation. Uh, it uh, keeps 
the spirit of the Sawyer home without the cost of the slate tile. So we were very happy to have done that. And, uh, you know, the museum uses it for storage of a lot of their artifacts. So certainly we want to make sure that the, uh, the roof uh, is uh, secure so it protects all those artifacts that we have for the museum. And I have to say the contractor working on this project was just fantastic. Midland Engineering as well as Matt Reinke from the Public Museum from their facilities uh, area. He did a, a fantastic job keeping ahead of uh, what needed to be done and fixing a lot of the things himself as well. So thanks again to those folks involved because that was a great project. Glad to see that almost done. Okay, um, it's coming up to that time of year, Mark, where we have the annual holiday parade coming to downtown Oshkosh. Absolutely. Uh, this year, it's going to be on Thursday, November 14th. Uh, as usual, the tree lighting is at 6 p.m., and then the parade starts shortly thereafter, about 6.15. So, uh, of course, it's brought, uh, brought to you by the Business Improvement District, and uh, this is just last year's parade. So, uh, you know, encourage people to come down there bundle up because you never know what the weather is going to be like uh, but if you don't want to bundle up because maybe that's not your thing Oshkosh Media is covering it and we'll be showing you a schedule on our website of when the replay times will be uh, but there are some a lot of folks who brave the cold and everything to be out there so you know don't be afraid to try it uh, and uh, it's a wonderful event and certainly want to encourage uh, encourage everybody to go out there and thank all the people who are out there uh, as displays or band members or uh, really just uh, showing community pride by being out there. Again, as Mark said, you can go to our website, www.oshkoshmedia.org, to find the replay times for the parade. But as Mark also said, we very much encourage you to come down there and, and uh, partake in person with the parade and all the festivities. It's really a great community event and, and I think one of the best parades we have here in the city of Oshkosh. So again, check out the holiday parade coming up on Thursday, November 14th. Okay, Mark, we want to talk about something that was just announced this week, and this is the Oshkosh Food Co-op Grocery Store. They want to raise funds to create this store. And honestly, I, I wasn't really aware of how this co-op worked and what it's all about. Maybe you can kind of start there first before we talk about the building itself. Well, first of all, I, full disclosure, I am a proud uh, member of the Oshkosh Food Co-op. I was uh, approached several years ago when they were about halfway through their effort, and uh, for $180, you can become a shareholder in the food co-op. So uh, they reached their target of 1,000 members, and that enabled them to get into the next phase of finding a location. And they have found a location, and it's uh, downtown at the southwest corner of Jackson and Pearl. Uh, you may have heard a couple months ago about a project called the Merge Project. Uh, it's one of the last pieces in the Marion Road project area. This is not on the river. This is at Jackson and Pearl. But the idea is to put the food co-op, a grocery store, on the bottom floor with three stories of residential above it. So this is the first major uh, anchor tenant for the merge development. And it's going to be a wonderful addition to the downtown area. So, so why is this idea of a food co-op so exciting for downtown Oshkosh? Well, a couple things. Uh, the number one reason from my standpoint is that downtown Oshkosh is considered uh, what's called an urban food desert. And what that means is that there is not a, a viable grocery store within a reasonable distance for people to walk or ride their bike. And so oftentimes people will eat unhealthy uh, foods because they're just more convenient because a convenience store or just something a little easier because you don't want to have to haul a bunch of stuff from the grocery store maybe you don't have transportation or something so it's it's going to fulfill a need in our downtown area uh, that's you know we haven't had a downtown grocery store in, in many years mm -hmm. now and this is community owned so yeah, there are a thousand plus members of the food co-op um, and now that they've got the, the number of members at the target number, now they're going to be raising $1.6 million to do the capital part of uh, getting the, the grocery store in. It'll have a lot of local foods, so, you know, local produce when in season, uh, as much local products as possible. Uh, they do things like uh, education on healthy eating and how to prepare certain foods. Uh, a lot of prepared foods, a little more on the healthier side because they're made fresh there. Um, the whole idea is to uh, encourage healthy eating, uh, local uh, produce, 
and in a location that typically is underserved. So meets a lot of check marks on things sure. that we'd like to have in the downtown area. All right, exciting project. We'll be uh, looking forward to seeing more development on that. Okay, Veterans Day is coming up Monday, November 11th, and uh, Oshkosh Media will be covering uh, various events locally as well for that. We're so proud to be part of the celebration of Veterans Day, and there are two events in particular that Oshkosh Media cover. Uh, one is at Oshkosh North High School, and they do a wonderful job. That's the one I typically attend. Uh, it's, uh, they have a, a ton of veterans show up. Uh, great uh, ceremony. Uh, there's usually a veteran that speaks about uh, his or her experiences from whichever conflict they were involved with. Uh, and that's a wonderful program. And we also have another program that's actually been going on for much longer than that. And that's over at the county courthouse. And that'll be at 1045, uh, right there on the stairs of the county courthouse. Uh, and uh, again, it's a, a wonderful tribute to honor those who have served our country, uh, uh, both in times of war and peace. As you said, very special programs, both of those. If you'd like to get replay times, please visit our website, oshkoshmedia.org, to find out when it'll be replayed on our channels. Okay, the herd is back in town. That's exciting. It's that time of year for basketball. Season number three for the Wisconsin herd. Uh, you know, I know with a lot of talk about the arena, that's just the owners of the arena. The herd does not own the arena. The herd is just a tenant to the arena and uh, very viable. They're owned by the Bucks. They've got great backing. And uh, so we want to remind people the Menominee Nation Arena is, is, is open and the herd starts tomorrow night. I believe they're going to have a, a little fireworks show at 6 p.m. Before, before game time. But the whole season is out there. So, you know, that's, that's your thing. If, if you like basketball, it's, it's a great family event. I, I enjoy going myself, but uh, it, I encourage people to take a look. The herd's going to be running their season through March. Um, maybe a little longer if they play a little better and make the playoffs for a change, but uh, no, I don't want to get Hopefully their record will be better this year than last This year. is a, a news program, not a sports <laughs> program, so right. we'll, just, uh, we'll just leave it at that. But it really it brings so many families out, and uh, it's, it's very exciting. And uh, the arena is a great addition to the downtown, the Sawdust District, and certainly want people to know that it's alive and well, uh, despite all the stuff you, uh, that's out there about their uh, the buildings, financial issues. Uh, Herd is, uh, is going to be there. All right, now I know this uh, next segment is one of your favorite segments as part of this show, and that is the question mark segment. So let's start with our question mark segment. And our question mark for this week's show is about 20 years ago, you made improvements to Kentucky Street by Merrill School. Why hasn't any attention been paid to Central Street? And that came from Dale via Facebook. So I guess, how do you address that? What, what, what's your answer to that? Well, you start out with thanking Dale for giving us a question to start with. And generally, when a street has been overlooked in an area, it's typically because uh, a, a utility issue, because it may not necessarily be connected or the utilities were in a good enough condition that um, we didn't want to uh, put a new street in and then tear it up again later on. So uh, we do have plenty of streets that are in need of improvement and Dale's right, uh, Central uh, is absolutely needed. Um, we're gonna be planning a full reconstruction of Central in 2024. That's gonna be from uh, Bent Avenue to Nevada and then it, it jogs over a little bit, and then there's Nevada down to New York. So that's planned for 2024. And the screen you see here is actually a full interactive screen that's on our website in our capital improvement area. And you can find the answers to Dale's question and any other question you might have about capital improvements. Um, and it'll give you details about when that street is planned, uh, how long it is, uh, just a ton of detail that you can find out maybe where and when the, uh, the sewer was last done. And a lot of these areas, sewer is almost 100 years old. So it's about time that we, we get these replaced. And I know there was a lot of discussion at last night's uh, budget workshop about this great new tool, this interactive uh, tool here for this, where you can go in and you can click on your street, you can find out what's being planned for it, if there's any work coming up, et cetera. And it's, it's really a project that's been in the works for several years, but they, I believe they launched it, what, two years ago? Yeah, they launched it two years ago, and they've been tweaking it, making little improvements based on uh, people's input. So absolutely look at it, and if you see anything that you want to find out about, uh, we can either show you how to do it, or, you know, give you some instructions, just email us, 
or uh, or if we're missing something, let us know that too. But the different categories of our capital improvement program, if you're interested in parks or sidewalks or traffic, um, public facilities, all those features are right in there. And we have an interactive map that you can filter out and say, I just want to see parks projects. I just want to see uh, water utility projects. You can do that all and pinpoint exact locations of where some of these projects are going. We're very proud of this. Um, this feature and I want to encourage people to look at it because they'll learn a lot about it so uh, Dale I, I expect you to go look at that and, and uh, get the answer to your question but thanks for the question because uh, that enables us to uh, to talk about this stuff and Dale only has to wait a few more years and Central Street will be addressed so thank you Dale for your question all right Mark that wraps up sort of the the various uh, news and notes we wanted to talk about with uh, with the program today we're gonna to take a short break here on the city managers report when we return We'll continue with some highlights of the upcoming Tuesday, November 12th, Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more of the City Manager's Report right after this. Attention Roku and Apple TV viewers. Oshkosh Media's GovTV and Life TV are now streaming live on Roku and Apple TV with many programs in HD. Simply search for Oshkosh Media in the channel store on your Roku or Apple TV device and install the free Oshkosh Media channel. Open the channel to access live streams for either GovTV or Life TV. If you're one of the many who have decided to cut cable, you can still watch live local programming, government meetings, and community-produced shows and content on your favorite streaming device. Don't forget to check out Oshkosh Media online at oshkoshmedia.org or the Oshkosh Media Facebook page for schedules and more information. Welcome back to the City Manager's Report. I'm your host, John Urban. Joining me is City Manager for the City of Oshkosh, Mark Roloff. We're talking about uh, now some of the highlights for the upcoming Oshkosh Common Council agenda coming up on Tuesday, November 12th. Mark, there's quite a few things on the agenda today. We're going to be talking first, though, one of the things we want to start off with is um, talking about this 9th Avenue, um, the Resolution 19569, 9th Avenue, getting the professional services for the right-of-way acquisition. And as I understand it, this is something coming up in a couple of years, but you have to start the process early. Right. Uh, you know, just before the break, we talked about the Capital Improvement Program. In 2021, we're planning to uh, reconstruct West 9th. This is west of Oakwood, just west of Mercy Hospital. We've just now acquired all the properties that they're now in the city. Before that, there was a mixture of town of Algoma and the city. Now it's all in the city. Well, now to widen that street, uh, urbanize is what I call, put curb and gutter, storm sewer in there, we need to acquire a little bit of right away from each side of the street. So that takes quite a while. So we're going to start that process so that through 2020, we can get the right of way acquired. Then we can start getting the design done so that we can start the project on time in 2021 long overdue it's a pretty bumpy road over there and uh it's it's well overdue to get that and all the utilities uh redone next time we want to talk about is resolution 19573 approve agreement with faust excavating for snow and ice removal for the coming year i know we don't like to talk about it at this particular time but it's inevitable it's going to be coming but this is really about if you don't get your sidewalk cleared within 24 hours of a snow event. Is that how that works? That's right. We, we have a, an ordinance in place, and 24 hours after a storm event ends, uh, you're required to have your snow removed. Um, and if you don't, if somebody calls you in, we don't actively look for those, but if somebody calls your property in, uh, we will go out and inspect it photograph it to confirm that it hasn't been taken care of and then we have a contractor go out there so this is for the award of the bid to faust excavating uh and they'll be out there to, and document it so that we can prove that so number one get your sidewalks cleared 24 hours after snowfall stop please don't cover fire hydrants in fact if you can any any way you can keep your fire hydrant clear if it's on your property uh, please do that because that will help us in the event of us uh, a fire and then of course don't throw snow into the street because you're just 
repeating the process. And I know that's really difficult, especially when the snow piles up, but do your best to keep uh, the snow out of the street and start by not throwing it. Another item we wanted to talk about, Resolution 19575, Approved Regional Fire Department Hiring Process Agreement with Chippewa Valley Technical College. And as I understand it, this is just helping the, the fire department expand their reach. It sounds recruitment weird. Recruitment reach, I should yeah, say. Recruitment reach. It sounds weird that we were saying we're entering into agreement with Chippewa Valley Technical College. We already have agreements with uh, Fox Valley Tech and I believe Northeast Wisconsin. But uh, finding good talent is a challenge these days. So we're just casting our net a little wider and uh, there's a very good program at Chippewa Valley just like there is here locally. Uh, but it gives us more people to choose from. Quite honestly, we have very high standards, and so we want to make sure we're getting the absolute best personnel. Uh, I know local folks who go to Chippewa Valley, just like they're probably folks from the Chippewa Valley who go to Fox Valley Technical College, but this is to ensure that we have as great a pool of candidates as possible uh, because of the challenging work that is associated with uh, fire and paramedic uh, that, that's with, uh, within the Oshkosh Fire Department. Okay, next item, uh, Resolution 19577, award demolition bid for um, the 7th Avenue block. And this is part of the Sawdust District redevelopment, is that true? Yeah, this is the northern end of the Sawdust District. We've owned some property there for a number of years, and we've just acquired some other property. So this map kind of shows you the general area where we're looking at doing the, the demolition. Uh, there's that sort of awkward shaped area, and then there's a little rectangle over on the left right on South Main Street. Uh, we've acquired these properties over the years and we need to start tearing them down so that we can put out what's called a request for proposal for people to say, here's what we would propose to do to the property. Now, some of this area is larger than just buildings because there's old concrete pieces, uh, uh, decks and things like that. It goes back to when it was industrial and, and areas uh, next to the railroad. It's to get all of that taken out and ready for uh, site development. So this is the next step in the process. Uh, the next step you'll see is next spring we'll be putting out uh, a request for proposal and see what people want to do with that site. And it'll be the area that you see, but also everything north of 9th um, uh, that's not uh, developed will be part of that request for proposals. Wow. So really, we're just getting this ready then for development. That's we're, we're clearing out the old and kind of getting it ready for contractors to, or developers to come in and say, this is what I would do. Yeah, and then we'll look and pick the best proposal that we think will best meet the needs of the Sawdust District and our plans that we've laid out there. So it's, it's going to be exciting to see that. But this is, this is the first step in getting the demo. So when you see some demos, nothing's proposed just yet, but we know that this is the next step to keep the process going. And the timeline for the demolition, is that going to be something? happening real soon this right after it's awarded it'll be it'll be wintertime uh, demolition okay all right uh, we now want to talk about uh, two items that are in some similar in, in like but they're different projects but uh, ordinance 19 584 and 585 584 is the zone change uh, basically that's for Smith school correct the old Smith school yeah and uh, that one uh, it's zoned institutional which is appropriate for a school uh, we want to make sure that we maintain some control and some uh, design standards over this. And so what we are proposing to do is rezone it to what's called institutional with a plan development overlay. And that gives us more discretion uh, and some flexibility. If they want to do things to kind of preserve some of the architectural features, we want to be able to work with them on that. And there might be some trade-offs that maybe our code doesn't allow for it, but with a plan development, you can do some, uh, some trading to make sure that uh, you can do things like that. So we're excited. Uh, the school district is going through their RFP process, their request for proposals, just like we talked about. But this will uh, provide more flexibility to them uh, so that we can work with the, whomever they choose to sell it to. This makes uh, it easier. Just makes it easier. Gives okay. us a lot more options. And then uh, subsequently, 19585 is for a zone change for the former St. Francis Cabrini School property? Right, right there on Merritt. Um, this is just for the school itself. I know there were some questions about the church. The church is not part of this process. The church is open right now. So this is about converting the old Cabrini School into some uh, low to moderate income apartments. Uh, if you watch the last council meeting, there was a presentation. So part of the process, similar to the Smith School, is to put that institutional with the plan development overlay to just uh, keep our options open on, on what features we can do to make sure that this is uh, a successful project. 
All right, so uh, next on the new resolutions, uh, Resolution 19-587-588, it's really talking about adopting the annual bu uh, 2020 annual operating budget as well as the 2020 CIP. Now, we're taping this on November 7th. Last night, November 6th, was the budget workshop. Maybe you just kind of, it sounds like we're really close to, to bringing it all together. Kind of give us some highlights of, of how the budget workshop went, both the CIP and the operating budget, and what impact that'll have on taxpayers. This uh, last night's workshop was the sixth workshop that council has conducted over the last few months. So kudos to council. They, do, they devote a ton of time to this, as does staff, to put this all together. Um, the council was given some options on things they could add or delete to the budget, pointing those things out for them to, to go over. And so uh, they finally made some decisions and gave us some direction on both the operating as well as the capital budget. On the operating side, uh, they made some changes to, uh, for example, add four firefighters to staff uh, another person on one of our fire engines to make for a, a more effective response. Um, so that's consistent with the fire department's uh, safety study. So we've got that. Uh, and they made some other changes, but the impact, a lot of people say, well, you know, what's it going to cost? Uh, and we've done an average for a $150,000 house, and the increase is only $48 a year. Now this is the number before council tweaked it, so, but this is the uh, amount we showed council with the budget there. The tax cost, remember, we only, the city only collects about a third of, uh, or keeps a third of the property tax bill. The rest goes to schools and the county and the Vogue Tech District. But for city taxes, you pay about $135 a month for a $150,000 house. And this is just an example of where your money goes. Debt service is the biggest, and that's, that's a lot of money, and it's probably a little too high if you ask me, but that's for our capital improvements. That's, that gets the streets done, uh, and that's, that's what they're there for. Uh, it gets parks improved. Then the next one, naturally, you would expect police and fire. Libraries up there. Public works is there, but there's a couple components to public works in there, garbage collections in there. So uh, the big three are typically police, fire, and public works, and that's what you see there. But you can see you get a lot of value for your property taxes. And I know pr we rely too heavily on property taxes, but this is where your money goes. So you get an idea of roughly uh, per month what you're paying for those things. So compare it to anything else that you have a monthly bill for, I think we represent a pretty good value for, for the services you get. So the estimated net increase that we're looking at for 2020 budget with based on a $150,000 home is roughly $48. $48 a year. Increase, okay. Yeah, so right. that's... That gives you a rough idea of what we're doing. All right, so any other takeaways from both the CIP as well as the operating budget discussions? The CIP is our capital improvement program. Uh, the council uh, was pretty clear they wanted to maintain uh, the borrowing level the same as last year, uh, and they've done a great job at getting us uh, our borrowing limit down quite a bit, so we're very pleased with that progress. Uh, but they did say, even though we're not going to be adding any more borrowing, we do want to invest in some design so that when the time comes that we can maybe do some of these public buildings, uh, parks building or some museum improvements, fire safety training facility, that we're ready to get those things done. So I see those happening in the near future and we're real happy about that. All right, we only have about a minute left. Um, let's just real quick talk about item 29, which is the complete the count for 2020 census. And that's really about citizen participation, correct? Yeah, we uh, put together a great program in 2010 for making sure we had a complete count. We were the second best city in the whole state. So we're not gonna fool with success. We're adding our neighborhood associations and some of our refugee groups to the group that we already formed. It's really more informing people to get good participation so that the Census Bureau doesn't have to go out and do a second count uh, before, before they submit their results. All right, well, thank you, Mark, for some highlights of the upcoming Tuesday, November 12th, Oshkosh Common Council meeting. That meeting can be seen live here on City on uh, uh, Oshkosh Gov TV. You can certainly watch it at 6 o'clock live. And I guess uh, you can see the replays on uh, go to oshkoshmedia.org. Uh, Again, we want to thank you for uh, tuning in. You can, watch, you can listen to it on, w, uh, on 101.9 Oshkosh FM, which is also online, and on the TuneIn radio app for mobile devices. Make sure to like Oshkosh Media on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for all your community and government programming and updates. Or check out our YouTube channel for government media replays and past episodes of your favorite programs. For City Manager Mark Roloff, I'm John Urban. Thanks for watching another edition of the City Manager's Report. Have a good night.
United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. Will you?